one of the things that, that I think has struck me like a polex is the insight that experts are about 70% unaware of how they do this wonderful analysis that they perform, this, these kinds of decisions that they make mm -hmm. that help them solve very, very complex problems. The, the reason for that apparently is just the way we're constructed as human beings. Mm -hmm. Our cognitive architecture requires that we can only think about very little at one time. So we have to depend on a, a, an area of our, of our brains that nobody knows much about, that we're not deeply aware of, but yet that controls most of our lives. It's what a lot of people call automated, non-conscious knowledge that, that really makes our decisions, that actually helps us solve problems, that does most of what we do. Now the reason for these two systems apparently is that a conscious knowledge, which is what we're all aware of, is its purpose is pretty much to solve new problems, not mm -hmm. to deal with our past experience. And we apparently don't have a lot of ability to think and to learn things really quickly because if we did, at least some people suggest, we might learn really stupid self-destructive things and mm -hmm. end our existence, so to speak. So we're filtering it. We're filtering. And, and so this automated expertise that we all have, which by the way was discovered by a Dutch guy named De Groot, I think, who studied chess masters, mm -hmm. found out that chess masters, the only way that they differed from novices in chess, uh, when the two were equal in intelligence, let's say, was that chess masters could show them any chessboard at any point in, a, in an actual game. You could show them 10,000 chessboards, actually, pictures of them. Uh, with actually chess pieces on them, and then later you could show them a chessboard they hadn't seen and one they had, and they would find, they would be able to identify 100% of the chessboards. Each one, they could tell you who was going to win the game most likely if they were the best player. Mm. And novices were random in their ability to identify chessboards. They'd see. So they mm. have this incredible pattern matching ability that they're not aware of. They can't describe to you how they do it. Uh, they can't describe to you how they play the game, but they are incredibly successful at it. So, so this has major implications for those of us who do analysis and interview or observe subject matter experts. To me, it has implications for everything that we do. Literally, everything we do involves thinking, it involves problem solving. Mm -hmm. And uh, it appears that we are not... Um, it, it, obviously, it's most important when we try to tell other people what we do, and that happens most often in training. I so, think 70% to 75% of all the training in the world is done by subject matter experts. Right, which means they could be missing up to 70% of what is needed Which means they are. I mean, the evidence is pretty, pretty heavy that it is, and mm -hmm. people that design training always work with subject matter experts. Mm -hmm. Most training, most instruction, most education is designed by experts, and so one of the reasons why people don't succeed, in my view, largely, is because they haven't got all the information they need to actually do what it is that that expert who is trying to help them, who intended to tell them everything, yes. simply wasn't able to. They can't if they wanted they to. Can't so, so cognitive task analysis is an approach, a methodology for, what, teasing this out of yes. these experts? Yes. Can you give us yeah, a yeah, it involves a over bunch of, well, First of all, on our website, we have a lot of information about this, obviously, and we're not selling anything. I want to be really mm -hmm. clear about this. Our, our primary goal here is to get people interested in it, get them using it, getting them building it more. But what it, what it right now involves, first of all, there's about 100 different versions of this, so you've got to be really careful okay. when you're out there. Somebody named Ken Yates, who worked at our center for a number of years, actually analyzed every one of them, found there were only six of them that were evidence-based. Mm. And out of those six, most of them were actually designed for what's called machine learning, teaching okay. computers, mm -hmm. robotics, that sort of thing. So only a couple of them are focused on human performance, human learning. Uh, there's a guy named Gary Klein, Klein Associates has a business where he does this actually commercially and so mm -hmm. on. So what it entails first is interviewing experts, individually, one by one and to get them to tell you step by step what actions and what decisions they take in order to accomplish a goal. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't actually worry about the fact that we're only going to get 30 percent of information from each expert because okay. there's this really strange thing we found which is that each expert is aware of different types of things that okay. they use to analyze or decide. 
So we, inter we finally need to interview three to four experts and we get about 80 to 90 percent mm -hmm. of the kind of mental analysis and decisions that people have to make. We then kind of capture that, we put it in a document, and then we do a trial and revise cycle with a novice who has to do that to see what's missing. Okay. We then go back to the experts and say, you know, we don't think you told us about this particular thing. And then they say, oh, well. So that helps with their recall. They can actually pull it up yeah, uh, yeah. if prompted in yeah, such a way? Yeah, apparently when, when they're prompted, when they actually, but we don't know what to prompt them for until we actually right. go through Find a the trial holes. cycle. Yeah. But the trial cycles work pretty fast because we really do have all but about 10 to 15 percent by the time we interview four people. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we build that into training. Uh, one of the very conservative ways that this work is done, the, cons the research is done anyway, is that we take trainees that are trained by the experts that we interview and we then take the cognitive task analysis that we get from those experts and have it actually presented by different people or online, even mm -hmm. without a human being actually doing the instruction. And we test the impact of that training on those two groups and see which does better. Mm -hmm. And we've never found, a, a, well, our meta-analysis, our attempt to summarize all of the research on this shows that about 40% more learning from the cognitive task analysis group in about 25% less time. So it's, and this is even with surgical residents who these people are bright enough, you know, mm -hmm. you can beat them with a stick and they'll learn things. Uh -huh. <laughs> so the fact that they're learning it quicker and better and not making mistakes actually when right. they apply is a hugely important thing for all of us. So there are many resources on the Center for uh, Cognitive Technologies website. Um, where would I start? Is there a, an article in particular that it would be a good starting point? We have point everything or? from a one-page description. If you okay. Want a quick Do you recall the title of, of, this. of that? It's called CTA Brief. Okay. And uh, uh, all the way to two recent chapters that we wrote where we tried to summarize everybody's work on this, and it's pretty mm -hmm. clear. There's a separate section called Publications on our website. Yes. And the first, I believe, the first category of publications in that uh, page is cognitive task analysis. Okay. There's a chapter there called cognitive task analysis in the handbook, mm -hmm. in, in one of the handbooks, and that's actually our best review. We have another chapter we did for ISPI's handbook, mm -hmm. uh, the, the most recent one, which talks about uh, CTA and its, its interaction with different kinds of design systems. Oh. So how it is that you do cognitive task analysis in a way that fits with some of what we, knew, we call these new complex knowledge design systems that are developing out there right now. Mm -hmm. 